So part of the problem that we have as we're going through an intro to DC electronics is looking at a complex circuit. Let's say I've got three loads that I want to run off of a 100 volt power supply. There's a lot of things that are going on here that really don't need to be as complex as it seems to be made out. So let's look at the circuit. Let's say I have a 100 volt, a 40 volt, and an 18 volt load that's going into this 100 volt power supply. And you can see in the gray, the one load needs 100 volts at 180 milliamps, another load's at 40 volts at 54 milliamps, and then the third is 18 volts at 36 milliamps. If I had to choose a particular point on the circuit where I could make a measurement to do a test to see whether it's good or bad and working or not, I would choose this point right here. If I could measure between that point and, say, a ground reference point, which is right here, I could actually make an entirely sound deduction as to how the circuit would behave and how it works. Let's take a look at current flow through the circuit to make that point and illustrate that point when it comes to bleeder currents and viewing of this current. All right, so the very first thing we want to do is let's look at all the pathways current can flow. Well, the easiest pathway will be here in black, and that is going through this load right here, the 100 volt at 180 milliamps. As we go through this video, if I take 100 volts divided by 180 milliamps, I would get 556 ohms. For that first load, it would appear on the circuit to be 556 ohms. So that's our first load. Our second load would be this green indicator. It goes through and it's coming to the 40 volt circuit and it's looking through that system and it comes back to here. So there's my second portion of the circuit. I have two pathways now. That 40 volter has a look at three unique resistors. It is seeing this resistor, this resistor, and that resistor in parallel to it, but it matches up with those three and becomes series at that point. I'm going to get into that just in a second, but what I want you to know is right now, those three resistors, the two that I'm erasing right now, are going to be in parallel with that 40 volter. And so there is now a green pathway for current to flow. Now there's going to be a third flow, and that third flow is going to be the 18 volt load. And notice it's going to go through, meet up, go through those two top resistors and come back. So you can see a black line, a green line, and a blue line for current flow in this circuit. There is still a fourth pathway that I'm going to draw in red. And that pathway in red right here is what we call the bleeder current the IB. The bleeder current is the current that has to flow in the circuit to make it work. In this circuit, my three loads are 100 volts, 40 volts, and 18 volts. In order for them to work satisfactory, I have to pay the piper to play, much like your car. In order for you to get 30 miles to the gallon, you have to have the key in the on position. The accessories have to be on. The computer has to run. The sensors within the engine have to be giving feedback to it. Those are all bleeding systems in that engine. Now, it's not considered bad by any stretch, but it just means in order for you to develop the 40 and the 18 volts as well as the 100, we had to pay the piper, and that is those three resistors in the middle have to run. Now, if I look at this middle resistor right here, notice the middle resistor has a red current flow and that blue current flow. And then when I get to the top here, this top resistor, I notice I have the red current flow the green current flow from that 40 volt load, and then that original blue. The point that we're making here is the only resistor that has the bleeder current in it is this guy right here. So typically when I look at a circuit, that will always be considered the bleeder current because only the bleeder in red is going to go through that resistor. So again, to highlight the circuit, we have series and parallel flows. A very rough rule of thumb is that the bleeder current, I sub B, is going to be about 10% of the total current flow. In this particular case, I have 180 plus 54 plus 36. If I add those up, that comes out to being 270 milliamps. That means the bleeder current is just about going to be 27 milliamps. It could be more, it can be less, but we're just rough estimating here. Another way to view this type of circuit would be to say, okay, I see it. Think of it as airflow. I have a very large building that I need to heat. And so it's going to see the full 100 volts at 180 milliamps. That's getting the most heat. That's the biggest room in the home. And then I've got air that has to travel through the ductwork to get to the living room, which may be the 40 volt at 54 milliamps. So think of the amount of energy to heat that room up would be at that position. And then finally, load that has the 18 volts and 36, 
you know, that's one of the back bathroom in the way back corner. We don't need that much heat to, or cooling to go into it because it's well insulated. It's in the middle of the house. But in order to get all of that heat from the furnace to go through there, I have to expend energy to push it through the ductwork, and we would call that that bleeder current. So this gives you a perspective to seeing how a complex circuit like this works. I'm going to leave you with one last tidbit, and then we're going to see this on another platform to make some analysis of what's going on. But let's say I have a multimeter, and I needed to make one troubleshooting measurement to make sure that everything works. So I'll take my common and attach it to ground. And then I'm going to take my volt side, and if I measure at that test point right there, if I read 18 volts, I certainly know then that this circuit is behaving and functioning just fine. If I get an oddball voltage right there, then I know I've got some problems going on in the circuit. So when we look at this branching and current and series parallel aspect of this, don't get hung up on all of the complexities of it. Remember, path, load, source. Know what test point measurements that are required to make your adequate assessment of the situation to see if it works. Then dive deeper into some certain categories or issues or next test points that we have to have.